Well, hello and welcome to the next in my series of short videos. My name is Dan, um, and today we're going to be talking about Boolean logic. So, in order to understand this video, you don't necessarily need to know uh, anything previously. If you've seen some set logic, um, sorry, set theory, then that could be quite helpful to you. Um, if you've done some programming, then that could be of help, but neither of these are actually essential. Um, uh, we're going to be looking at Boolean logic, which deals with the concepts of true or false. So, let me take you back to the year 1854. In Spain, there was a civil war. In the Crimea, there was an ongoing war. And there was a cholera outbreak in London. It was a punch cartoon from that event. Also, a mathematician by the name of George Boole published uh, some theories about some logic, and this is called Boolean logic, named after George Boole. Okay, so Boolean logic is to do with statements, um, and they're statements that can be seen as being either true or false, and it's a vast simplification of the real world and an abstraction of things, but it can be quite useful in, uh, and as we'll see. In later videos, is quite useful in uh, the realms of electronics and in computing. Um, so here we have a statement, I am wearing a tie. And it's, this is a straightforward statement, and we can, uh, I can clearly tell you, you can take it on trust, that this is false. I'm not wearing a tie. I don't think ties are good things. Uh, here's another statement, I am a good dancer. Now this is more of a tricky statement, because this might be a matter of opinion. So some statements work well with Boolean logic, this one not so much, not a suitable statement at all. So Boolean logic is concerned with statements and whether they're true or false, um, and this may seem quite straightforward and it may uh, not seem to be of particular interest to you, uh, but however Boolean logic relates to several other areas that have become quite important in recent years, so it relates to computer programming. Um, and if you've done any programming, you might have come across Boolean variables. And these are variables which have two values or two possible values, true or false. Very strongly relates to the Boolean logic we're talking about. And these are often used in conditional statements if something is true, something is false. Um, it also relates very strongly to digital electronics, uh, which is uh, uses the concepts of off and on for uh, voltages, um, and also relates uh, similarly quite strongly to binary numbers. Now, binary numbers, you probably know, um, you only can have a zero or a one in any digit, and again, it's this bipolar, uh, you've only got two states that you can have, uh, which is similar to your true and false. So, although this was invented back in the late 19th century, mid-19th century, it has proved to be incredibly important when it comes to digital electronics and computing. Uh, so, we'll start with statements, but we're also going to introduce some logic here as well. Uh, let's have some examples. Actually, it says logic, it's really operations. So, these are things that will allow you to combine statements together and produce different outputs. So, we have three basic operations in uh, Boolean logic, which are the AND, uh, OR, and not. Let's go through some examples. So I can see if it is daytime or the light is on. Ah, very simplistic view of life, but uh, again, this is the way that Boolean logic works. Um, so here we have our operation or. So this is taking the two statements, it is daytime and the light is on. If either of them is true, then the output from this is that I can see. Here's another example. I will eat the pie if the pie is in front of me and the pie is cooked. So I'm not going to eat it if it's not cooked. Um, and here's our second operator. It's the and operator. Again, uh, this is being used on these statements to produce a, an outcome. Uh, oh, we can add another one. And I am not too full. Actually, I've been a little bit sneaky here because I have deliberately introduced one here, which is a negative. 
And another way of uh, representing this would be to say, and not, I am too full. So if this statement is true, that I am too full, then actually uh, it's going to negate me eating the pie. So we want the inverse. Not gives you the inverse of a statement. Um, we're going to add another condition in here because um, otherwise it might get a little bit messy. And I can see. So I'll eat the pie if the pie is in front of me and the pie is cooked. And not I am too full. And I can see. Now we've had this uh, statement. I can see. Um, a little while ago, which is where we had our or. So let's substitute the two statements with the or in there. So it is daytime, or the light is on. So our full set of conditions, I'll eat the pie, if it's there, if it's cooked, if I'm not too full, and if it's daytime, or the light's on, so I can actually see the pie. So this is all very well. Um, we have our statements, we have some operations going on, which is our and, our or, and our not operations. Um, in order for, to make this more generally useful, we want to think about ways of expressing this uh, in a more abstract way. So we're going to start using symbols, um, and we're going to abstract things out so the specifics of the statements are becoming less important. I wanted to show you the, uh, the way some of these uh, this logic can be manipulated. Uh, so we're going to start by taking our statements and replace them with letters. Each statement still stays as a statement, but instead of writing it out in full, we're going to just use a single letter to replace it. So here's the full set of uh, statements with operators that we had. Um, and we're going to replace the pie is in front of me with the letter A. And we're going to replace the pie is cooked with the letter B. You might see where I'm going there. Uh, I am too full is going to be replaced with C. It is daytime with D, and the light is on is replaced with E. And our overall outcome, I'm going to also give that a letter, and for arbitrarily, I'm just going to call it X. Uh, now we're going to move these around and put them all onto one line to make it easier to look at. So I haven't done anything, I haven't actually changed any of the content here. We've just got X equals A and B and not C, and I've put brackets around slightly differently there, and D or E. And the brackets are used to give you a context of what ideas go together. So we're about halfway there. We've replaced our statements with letters. And next we're going to look at the operators, the AND operator, the OR operator, and the NOT operator. And there are several ways of writing those out. Unfortunately, uh, mathematicians have not agreed through the years on the best way of uh, showing these operations. Uh, so. This actually, using the words and, or, and not, is one. Um, and that can be used. You can use that if you wish. So you may see this in uh, in some places. Uh, here's another. Uh, so in this situation, um, and is represented by a, a dot or a full stop. Not is represented by a apostrophe. And or is represented by a plus symbol. I find this one particularly confusing because I think that plus should be and rather than or. Uh, here's another one. This is probably more uh, common. In fact, it might be the most common way of doing it. Uh, so you've got a um, an upward flexing bar to show and you've got a downward flexing bar to show or. And you've got a, a bar that goes across the top of a letter to indicate not. This has strong similarities to notation used in set theory, uh, particularly to the uh, union and the intersect uh, symbols that are used. Uh, one unfortunate thing about this is that the not bar, which you can see here over the C statement, is quite awkward for doing on a computer. And finally, uh, one more way of representing this. Uh, we've got a double ampersand sign uh, for and. We've got a double upright bar symbol for or, and we've got a single exclamation mark before a letter uh, to indicate not. Um, this is what most programming languages use for Boolean logic uh, when you're manipulating Boolean variables. And so, in fact, this is what I will be using from now on. So as a quick recap uh, of that, we've got the AND operation. We're going to use a double ampersand. 
or we're going to use a double upright bar and not we're going to use an exclamation mark. So we're going to do one last thing in this video. We're going to look at some Venn diagrams. Uh, so Venn diagrams uh, are a useful tool. Uh, you've probably come across them. They used a lot in set theory to show uh, intersects and unions and things like that. Um, they're also quite useful in Boolean logic uh, for uh, visualizing um, statements and combinations of statements, or at least they are for simple cases. Once you get beyond about three statements, it gets difficult to use Venn diagrams because they start to look quite confused. So here we have statement A, and we've got a circle to represent that statement. Uh, so if you imagine on this screen that you've got in front of you, all the possible situations that can happen in our uh, slightly limited world here um, are pixels on the screen. And those pixels that are inside the A circle are those where the A statement is satisfied. So A is true. And those pixels that are outside the circle are those where uh, the A statement is not true. So whatever our statement happens to be here, actually it's more normal to show this by filling in that circle. So the gray represents when A is true and the Light green background represents when A is false. And so our first operator that we're going to look at is the not operator, uh, which will be the opposite. What's the opposite of the contents of the circle? It's everything that's not in the circle. So everything outside the circle um, represents not A. What we really want to do, though, is to be looking at the combinations of two statements. So we've got two statements here, A and B, and uh, you've probably seen Venn diagrams like this before. There is an overlap between the two. And we're going to look at, once again, our uh, screen represents all the possible situations, all situations that uh, satisfy the A statement are inside the A circle. All situations that satisfy the B statement are inside the B circle. Um, and so, first of all, we're going to look at the operator A or B. So all the gray pixels on our screen now are ones that represent either A is true or B is true, and in some, circum some circumstances, both A and B are true, and that's the bit in the middle. Um, and the other operator we have is the AND operator, which limits us down to just the intersect between these two circles. So only the situations where both a, so it's inside the A circle, and B, so it's inside the B circle, are true. So you just get that uh, lens shape part between the two. That's the end of this video. Come back again another time for another video from me.